we tell them what we're doing? At the uh, Legends of Drift this past weekend, we lost almost all oil pressure, almost catastrophically. Our bearings are almost totally shot. We had another scenario where the cam bearings walked out on us. So from my research, I've seen that high lift and high uh, tension valve springs on high horsepower engines tend to walk the cam bearings. So lots of research and come to the conclusion we need to somehow pin the cam bearings into the block. So how do you do this? Because it's really hard. You can't get into it. You can't like stake it. The Babbitt material is so soft, you can't modify it anyway. So I found a video on YouTube of a guy basically drilling through the top of the valley. So I've put my pilot hole started already. And we're gonna drill down into the cam journal through the bearing and put a bolt in it. Basically the bolt will be just below the surface of the cam material. So it'll stake it and it won't let it move in and out. So that's actually the bearing that was in it. That's one of them. And there's the other one. So what had actually happened is these had spun and then started to walk out. So why didn't this happen last year, you might ask, in Driftmasters? Well, Driftmasters, you're like, you practice, you do qualifying, you do competition immediately. Like all super quick, all happens at the same time. We're doing DMCC, you got a full day of practice, like eight hours worth of practice, the full day of competition with practice again. So this and the three events on this engine has had probably more runtime and seat time than all of Driftmasters the whole year. So this was gonna happen when we were at, uh, in Europe. So glad that it didn't, glad that it happened when we were here. So that's what we're gonna do. And now on the front and rear cam bearing, I've drilled and put a set screw into the end of the bearing. So the screw or the threads on the set screw will stop it from sliding in and out. So I've done that on the front and rear because I can't get to it from the top. Super sketchy, never uh, never done anything like this before. Never had to, this is kind of the highest horsepower LS that I've ever worked on. So we got to do things different and I don't ever want to put cam bearings in the scene again because we were very close, very close to losing this engine catastrophically. Two of the mains were pretty much worn right through the Babbitt down to the copper. One of the rods was worn through the Babbitt and into the aluminum. So thankfully Josiah shut it down. He was very cautious about the oil pressure. So we're gonna start drilling into this really nice block and not screw it up. Okay, so we're gonna get this up. We got the, our vacuum. vacuum. So I'm gonna start by not completely drilling through the block. The material I have to go through is probably about an inch thick. What I want to do is test to see if uh, this counter bore bit that I ordered will work for this. So as you can see, there's no flat surface here. And even if it was flat, it's not really smooth. So I'm gonna use this to, once I've drilled my five mil hole, to counter bore a small spot for a cap head screw to sit in there, flat surface for it to level out on. So I'm gonna drill a hole a little deeper, enough that the end of my counter bore bit will fit in there and I'm gonna make sure this works, make sure I've got the right screw head size that will fit in there, might need to do some machining, but uh, that is gonna be uh, a test before I break through on the other side. Cause we do have to drill through the block, through the cam bearing, clean up the material on the inside of the babbit of, of the cam bearing, and then set our screws in, measure the depth, and, not mess it up because I don't want that screw to go into the cam. So here goes nothing. Hey, you got the little vacuum going? Oh, maybe maybe yeah. we should get the machinist to do the machinist thing. Uh, machinist doesn't use a drill to do, use a counterboard. <laughs> Yours is just a fancy <laughs> drill. That's like, it is. it's just a little more stable, a little more rigid. You saying I'm not stable? <laughs> Or rigid. Or rigid. Or rigid. <laughs> oh. So it is a 5.2, and even though I did a 5 mil by hand, a little bit, it's a 5.2 tip on it. And why would it do that? that? Why would they? A, Dylan? It's probably clearance for a 5 mil bolt. That? Is it counting for a for a bolt to go through? Okay. 5.2 times 25.4. Wait, other way. I do the exact same thing almost every time. So it's a 204. That would be a number drill. Very likely, but I'll go check my index. There might be a 32nd or a 64th. Close. You said 204? Yeah. What's up? What's so that's a uh, number 44 or 43. 204th. We use the 13 64th, which is 203. 5.2 is 204. Seems to fit. Oh, it does fit? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Wow. Am I hired or what? Come on over. Let's go. No CNC. Yeah. <laughs> I got your CNC right here. 
Look at that. Look at look at look at look at it. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Looks like a little factory like that. I've seen worse out of a whoa, factory. Whoa, whoa, you got to I've seen worse. <laughs> He's a fan. It looks good. <laughs> Is that what you it looks great. Okay, how many more? Oh, just two more. Well, I guess yeah. that worked, so I could just full send that now down into the bearing. Let's see what it looks like. It's almost at the back of the bearing. Is it? But it's in the bearing. In the bearing. <coughs> what? That's the 13. That's the 5 doing, which is what you need for an M6 by 1 tap. Drill tap. So you're only using 13 for the very top part to center it. So the thread plus Loctite is what we're sealing the thread with. Is that the idea? Yeah. Sealing is the oil will want to come out of these holes. Not like it will very well, but it's still. Oh, I don't think it's not sealed. I don't think it would. And you're no, using... there's like there's mild pressure behind it because it's on the like the running face. It's on the journal of the cam camshaft, so there'd be whatever pressure is exposed. Yeah, we can put a dab of Loctite on the on the head of it just to seal it perfectly. But I think just even the head on that beautifully machined surface will seal. If it's 100% square. Yeah. Okay. One nicely pinned. And there you have it. Cam bearings shouldn't walk out anymore. And if they do, I give up. <laughs> hey, you know what we should do? What? I bet you 2J cam bearings don't walk out. <gasps> Just saying. See? We should put a 2J in it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay, get it ready by tomorrow. Oh, we'll just put that in. <laughs> Screw this. <laughs> you should be able to push up on the stud if you need to. First off, jig table, how is it? Phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know how I went this long without one. So would recommend to anybody, if we start selling them, buy one ASAP. This is I think we call them rally style jack stands. So basically the Corvette has tubes welded into the frame rails and then it has special jack stands i'm sure you've seen them on like different time attack cars hope climb cars whatever rally cars and there's basically going to be a sleeve welded in here and then that sleeve is going to contain a pin and that pin goes into the tube that gets welded in the chassis and then it has basically chassis mounted jack stands this one will be two hole adjustable so it'll have a short hole for like just doing wheels and tires like doing alignment or whatever and then if you need to get like the car way up in the air like you're doing a clutch or a, you have to pull the transmission or just anything where you need tons of clearance under the car maybe exhaust work you get a, a higher point to jack the car up off and we all know jack stands always if you're jacking a car up don't trust a hydraulic jack mostly everybody here has cheap jacks like harbor freight princess auto canadian tire like all that stuff junk if a hydraulic seal blows out and you're under a 3,000 pound car you're dead or severely injured jack stands are the move and that's what these are how to go together basically just a big sandwich so you have like your back plate with the logo cut in it and you've got all the rib plates which is like all the structure basically so it could be these, so this is your back plate, your face plate, and then all the ribs. These three would be the ribs. And you've got your feet pads. And then, yeah, 
basically just all clamps together. It's all plug welded. And then I just gotta cut the tubes and weld the tubes in place. And then it's all done. And then I gotta do that three more times. And I'm pretty deep in this one. It has a nice little pocket to put all your lug nugs. They will be getting coated. I don't know what color yet. Hopefully something sick. Maybe we can convince them to do like a gold or something. Sauce. Something visually striking so that you don't forget them. Orange. Okay, so for the jack stands that uh, Rain's been working on, there's a backstory on to how we wanted to get these installed onto the car and how to do it repeatedly, because we have three Corvettes here. The last time we did it, we basically just did a bunch of measurements and tried to pick the best place to drill through, and we didn't really have a jig or any way to hold everything square, so obvious thing to do would be use the CAD files that we have access to and create a uh, jig that bolts to the chassis somehow. So the first thing I did was open up the uh, Z06 CAD file. Now this is an aluminum frame car, but fortunately the frame rail things that they put inside here are the same on both. So I essentially designed this jig to bolt to these frame points, which really are have, they have cutouts in the rocker. This is kind of where you're supposed to put your hoist arms. So using these as a reference for connecting and getting the height spacing width wise was really crucial. And then the way that I was able to keep it perfectly square was I basically just C-clamp square tube onto this plate and I attached the left and right at the same side. And then what I did was I made a arbor, basically a three foot long section with a hole saw threaded on. I'll show you that in a second. We're gonna step out in the shop. And I hole sawed through the chassis, through the fender, through the chassis, and it came out on the inside of the frame rail right here. And this is essentially where you would do a plug weld. Underneath here, kind of inside of the frame, I was able to get a weld around here. And then underneath on the bottom, I could get a weld on the bottom of this and then fully weld it on the inside there. So that is exactly where the chassis was intended to be picked up on. And then I designed some, uh, some jack stands. So this currently, I wanted a jack stand that was 18 inches center to floor with a second option of uh, 12 inches. Cause when you're doing tires or anything and you don't need the car super high off the ground I can pull this pin out and slap it in this one and it'll be significantly lower. I also made these holes large enough so that I can pull the pin and slide it in any one of these holes uh, for storage because when we put these on the pick cart we want them to be able to be stacked right next to each other. Maybe just a single pin that sticks out and you can kind of slide all four of them on um, onto this pin. And then this little cutout is actually for wheel nuts, so you can stick your wheel nuts on this little shelf here. Whatever, anything else you might have that small bolts, whatever that you're working on, you can stick them on this little shelf. This is all 1/8 steel. It's uh, about the same weight as a jack stand. I think I could definitely make it lighter, but there's a thing that uh, I would like to do, and it's overkill on anything that's supporting the weight of a vehicle, obviously. So I don't mind that it might be two pounds more than it should be because it's definitely not going to buckle, fold, bend, compress, nothing. This thing is really, really solid. Um, Rain's been putting that together. I'll show you guys the jig, the little keyway thing that I made. It, it took a lot of brain power, surprisingly, to make this thing that centered a bolt, a stud, inside of that little slot but then also allowed me to not pop it out by accident and then actually thread something on. I'll show you what I mean. This is kind of like how the jack stand will sit. It'll be slightly further away, so it won't interfere with that, but essentially we're gonna have four of those babies holding the car up. That's gonna be the height off the ground, and then we'll be able to use this location as well. I'll show you what I mean by the jig and how it works, and uh, the arbor as well, which is pretty cool, and all this stuff, obviously, both designed and just hand bombed. So let's go take a look. Okay, here's the arbor that I was talking about. Inch and a quarter hole saw, inch and a quarter tube. I machined uh, these dowels that I shoved in. They were about an inch and a half long and then I put a bolt all the way through it. And we actually plug welded it from the side. So we just drilled a small hole through, 
small hole through. Same thing here, this is a 5 8 bolt threaded in from the inside and then plug welded in the end so it's very, very concentric. So this would be the jig, this bolted to the bottom of the frame and then these are the catch plates that I was talking about. Did I tighten them on real tight? I did, one sec. So this car is up in the air, I'll show you on the pro car. This took some finagling. I wanted the stud to be in the middle of the slot, okay? Here's the slot. The way that you can install it is like this. So then when I drop it through, it's dead center. And this catch is just catching the edge there. And then just catching the edge here. These holes were so I could get a plug weld because if I weld it here, then it wouldn't sit flat. Slap that up in there. And then I slide this nut up to the top and basically what that does is the nut is slightly wider than the hole so I'm able to like push up on this and easily thread another nut on and zap it up and then when it's tight the tube that we put on it is big enough to go around the whole thing and it tightens down perfectly on the frame rail itself giving us a real square flat surface so all of that uh, honestly took way too much. Obviously you could have put like some kind of a hook that you just thread in and turn and it fits but then it wouldn't be perfectly centered with the slot and I could be clamping the jig slightly off if I did it wrong so I was really critical on making sure that they're all the same and then the result is very satisfying. That's essentially what you get, what you end up with. Is Four of those holes perfectly aligned, square all the way around, so that if I ever needed to, you know, actually use these points as some kind of a reference, they're going to be probably within a sixteenth, like sixty thou, couple millimeters of each other all the way around. Really important for me. I love symmetry. I love perfection and all these other things. So that's it. Now the jig has done these two cars. It is on this car already. You can see the posts hanging out there and we're going to be able to safely lift this car up on uneven terrain and work underneath it really fast. That's kind of what I'm most excited about. The investment time in doing this is, is hours, all for the save of a couple seconds and a little more safety, but it's cool, it's fun, I like doing it uh, and that's, that's you know half of it. So that's pretty much the end of this video. Next week, we'll have something else for you guys, so we'll see you then.